beloved in the Lord, in the wonderful and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining today's Bible study. Where we will delve deeper into the Word of God. And I trust your life will never remain the same. So as we open today's chapter, let's humble ourselves before God and dedicate this moment. My name is John Bazera. We will come from Dominion Church International. We Dominion Church International and we believe this is your moment when God will personally speak to you and change your life again. so let's pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you you are good good father you are God of all grace even today your grace is available Lord we honor your word for you have highly exalted your word above all the words of men and today, Lord, as your word goes forth, it goes forth in power, in simplicity, in grace, to change every life that is hearing us. And at the end of the day, we pledge King of glory, that the glory, the honor, the power will return to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I will be taking our reading today. As we continue with the book of Revelation, from chapter 10, from verse 1 to verse 11, the Bible says, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered. And do not write them. The angel who I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven. And he swore by him who lives forever and ever. Who created the heavens and the things that are in it. The earth and the things that are in it. The sea and the things that are in it that they should be delayed no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared by his servants the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven, spoke to me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it. And it will make your stomach bitter. 
Kana kayolu mutolmo. But it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Neg mukamwa ko kana ba kawo mere vungo mubisi gwenjuchi. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. Nento ala katabwa katondo mukono gwa malaika. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Kali kawo mere vungo mubisi gwenjuchi mukamwa kang. But when I had eaten it, nebwe nakalia. My stomach became bitter. Olubuto luange ne luka izibwa. And he said to me. Nangamba anti. You must prophesy again. Chiku gwani dokubu ulila na te. About many peoples. Iria abantu abanji. Nations. Na mawanga. Tanks. Nenimi. And kings. Niba kabaka abanji. This is our portion for today. Bino bebe awandi kiba vya fulu alido. Spirit of the living God. Mwe waka tondo mulama. Please. Take the place of preeminence in this time that we have to amplify this truth. We step aside, Lord, that you take your place. Don't allow any word to proceed from our mouth except that which you have ordained from on high. We pledge, Lord, that after all is said and done, the honor, the glory, and the praise will be returned to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today we pick on another exciting portion of scripture. As we embark on this journey of revealing Jesus Christ, for many of us, as we progress, we often lose track on what this is all about. But when we go back to the first verse of the ch chapter 1 of the book of Revelation, the Bible makes it very clear that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants the things which must take place shortly. In other words, this is not a revelation about anything else. The key subject is Jesus Christ. And in verse 3 he points out that blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophet and keep those words which are written in it. For the time is near. There is a blessing that comes to those that hear. There is a blessing that comes to those that do read these words. Why am I taking you back here? Because many times when we read the book of Revelation, all Bible prophecy in general, we have come to a conclusion that it is so mysterious that it cannot be understood. You see, if scripture is divine revelation, then the intent of scripture is to reveal that which God wants to be revealed. So when we look at divine revelation, it simply means God is disclosing all God is unveiling truth. So, Bible prophecy and scripture in general is God's approach to unveil truth to us. So, God cannot be unveiling and then hiding at the same time. So, we need to have that approach. Because one, we need to understand that God is omniscient. So he knows everything. And he's the creator of all people. So he understands the intellectual capacity of everyone. As therefore, if he's 
unfailing truth to all people whose intellectual capacity is wearable then he will bring it in a manner that whatever he is bringing forward will be understood otherwise then God becomes a poor communicator. Then which is far from the truth. So why do we think that Bible prophecy or the book of Revelation is a mystery? Do you want the answer? It is because we have made it so. God is clear about the future. He is very clear about the past and the present. And everything he has laid out in scripture is to help us to understand how this story ends. Unfortunately, we miss out the key subject of God's story. And that is the person of Jesus Christ. Think about it. When you go through the Old Testament, you have over 300 promises that point to the messianic coming of Jesus Christ. Over a hundred of them have been fulfilled in the New Testament. That means we have over 200 that are not yet fulfilled. And these will be fulfilled in our time. Otherwise, if we don't understand it from that point, then even what Jesus spoke about himself and his coming takes on a different meaning. We have three records in the Gospels. In Matthew chapter 24 and 25, in Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21, Jesus himself talking about his second coming. So, the other thing I need you to understand is that this prophecy was not handed down to us. In the immediate context, it was handed to the people of so many centuries ago. Now, some of them, all of them were ordinary men and women. These were ordinary people. They did not have the theological knowledge we have boast about today. So they understood what God said in the context of what the way he said it. You see, God has given us his infallible record of how everything is to come to pass. Uneducated people like fishermen were entrusted with this truth. The challenge is we think that God did not mean what he said. And therefore try to add meaning to what he already said. And spiritualize and try to interpret what has already been laid for us. I'll just give you an example. I was talking to somebody the other day. And he told told me, uh, you know, he was equating the church to the 12 tribes of Israel with regards to prophecy and say the church represents the 12 tribes the church represents Israel as a whole. And I told him that's where we make the mistake. When God talks about the church, He is very clear. 
When he talks about Israel as a nation, he's very clear. One does not represent the other. And we see that as we go along. In the consummation of the age, that both the church and Israel will have the part in God's inheritance as he promised. And not one representing the other. Praise be to God. What is it that I want to say? When we understand that every most of what was said is literal. And it changes our perspective. So for you and I who are living today, we need to ask ourselves the question. What is it that, how are we living today? In light of our, the coming of our Lord. Because the fact is that he will come. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 51. Paul writes to the church and says, Behold, I tell you in a mystery that we will not all sleep but we will all be changed in a moment in a trickling of an eye in other words there will not be any ceremony about it just like that will be changed in a moment no sign one moment we will all be changed at the last trump for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and he says we will be changed he alludes to the same in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 when he says for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain will be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall always be with the Lord. And he says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. The Lord is coming. So how do we live in light of his impending return? Let me provide some suggestions. This is what Paul writes to us Paul in his letter to Titus. Chapter 2 from verse 11. He says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously Righteous and godly in the present age. No again, there is a looking for the blessed return. Or the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus has given us grace. And that grace teaches us to say no to sin. So if we are to live, we are to live in a life with a life that is safe. That says no to sin. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That says no to sin. Do you know what that means? That says no to ungodliness. Do you know what that means? That says no to unrighteousness. Do you know what that means? That says no to ungodliness. In this present age, living in hope. 
Ngatuli wo tubera mu bulamu ngatusubira looking for ngatuli indirira the blessed appearance olona ku oruro mu kisa the lord of glory olwa mukama wechitiba that's how he expects us to be what he wants to subira Jesus said the same yes na ya choke in Luke chapter 21 Luke abili mwe and verse 34 asatu mulu and say take heed to yourself nga mwegendereza lest at any time mulemenga your heart be overweight. I, I, I love what he said. Because he's saying be on your guard so that your heart are not weighed down. Now that word weighed down comes from a Greek word bareo which means having your eyelids heavy with sleep. I mean you have been before a TV watching your favorite program. And your eyelids are so heavy with sleep. There is a drowsiness that has taken over you. That you cannot follow what is happening. You like what is happening. But there is a weight upon you. That is prohibiting you from following what is happening. Now Jesus applies that to the heart. When he talks about us taking heed to ourselves, lest our hearts don't be overweight. He's saying don't let your heart lose its edge. Don't let your heart grow numb. Don't get your heart grow insensitive. With respect to the spiritual matters. So we are to live in a state of being alive. We are to live in a state where we are watching out for what is happening and make sure that our hearts are connected in the spirit to what the Lord is speaking to us in the moment. That is how we are to live in this moment. Because as we see to from today's scripture, the coming of the Lord is not so far away. But what we have in today's text, we have an interlude between the sixth wakati wa malaika wo mukaka and the seventh trumpet akagomba ko mukaka na ko musa now we have seen an interlude before katitula bya kasera ko linga ko kumula between in this between the sixth and the seventh chapters wakati we esule yo mukaka ne yo musa when the sixth and seventh sea were about to be broken between the sixth and the seventh sea nga akabolera ko mukaka na ko musa kali kumbi okubembo So we now sing another interlude. And we will see another interlude in chapter 16. Nemu maase tujja kulaba akalala musule ya 10. When we come to the judgments of Baal. Katujja mukusale misange jo buso wani. So we saw an interlude with the judgment of the seals now we have an interlude with the judgment of the trumpets and we also have another interlude with the judgment of the bowels now we will get to that point but why this interlude. Why this moment of cessation between two judgments? It's like the mercy of God is still appealing to humanity to turn back before unleashing another wave of destruction we have seen from the scriptures that all these judgments are ordained from god katonda ya jia ya jeka yali mufuzi and in the last one we saw one third being white ogwasemba twala bange kitundu kimuku bisate byabantu ngabattibwa and yet the people remained and repentance. Now we see an interlude here. And John 
Yokana then brings us another revelation. The Bible says Bible he saw a mighty, another mighty angel. I want us to take note of the word another. He saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He is clothed with cloud. He has a rainbow on his head. His face is like the sun. His feet are like pillars of fire. <laughs> that in itself is one hell of an appearance. <laughs> And the Bible says, Bible when he stood, where one foot stood on the land, the other foot stood in the water. Think about it. It's like God is trying to communicate something here. He owns the heavens and everything that is there. He's owning the earth and all its fullness. He owns the seas and everything that is in the sea. So whatever is about to be declared, it needs the attention of every creation. And the Bible says that when this angel stood, he cried out with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. What a sight. <laughs> we sit all responsible. We hear roars of the angel sound. Then we hear thunder. Two sights that bring fear to man. Coming from the response of this angel. Now, some people. Having looked at all this, the roaring of the voice we see it in the Old Testament. We see the cloud and the pillar of fire escorting the children of Israel from Egypt to the land of promise. We see the rainbow. When Noah came out of the ark, as God's promise for protection never to destroy the earth with water again. We see the shining face of the Lord of glory. So we have seen all this before. And it describes the presence, the power, and the protection and the majesty of God. And for many of us, or many have read this and interpreted it as this being Jesus Christ showing up on earth which is the wrong interpretation because the bible says bible I saw still another mighty angel. Now the word another, I told you, is the same word alos. Which means another, which means one of the same kind. If they had used heteros, which means this an, or another of a different kind. So this is one of the same kind like the other mighty angels we have seen before who stand in the very presence of God. And when this angel cry to heaven. The Bible says there were thunders that came from heaven. And these thunders were seven which marks completeness. 
kwali okubatuka musanvu obuchikirira obutukiride and they uttered voices ne bwogera amalobozi in other words they delivered a message wale to obubaka which in verse 5 musule yokutano we see that this message was intelligible to john mulinyiryo lokutano obubaka buno yokana yafuna okutegera kwa john understood the message yokana yategera obubaka and as he is about to write what he has heard iranga yeteketeke okuwandika biyaulira another voice edoboze dala from heaven eliava mu which is probably jesus or the father himself jinzo okubalya yesu kristo bakitafi mwe tells him nelimugamba not to write what he has had yo ulide but see it up nete kakaka bonero what is the lesson for that twiga muchi wano you see many times ebisere ebisinga we pride in what has been gracious and revealed by god twenyumira twenyumiriza nyo mwe byo katondo mukuita mu kisache byatuwa but we should never pride in what god has gracious revealed to us nete tugeza ngo kwenyumiriza mwe byo katonda byatuwa kuita mu kisache why is that so rachi because we don't know everything kubanga te tumanyi byo na god you see god has revealed his purposes katonda ye atwaddo kubikulibwo kwebigenderera but he has not revealed every detail of his plan nete atwadde kubikulwa kwa buli kimu che che cha tese te sokola no wonder the way unya Deuteronomy 29:29 tells us ichamba teke echo kubiri abiri mu mwenda abiri mu mwenda tukamba the secret things belong to God tebe byo ne bya me bya kwekebwa bya katonda but the revealed things ne byo ne bya bikulibwa belong to us bya fe and our children's children naba naba so naba zukuru what he has chosen to reveal katonda cha saze wo kutubikulira but he has not revealed everything nenga tanda watu we kubikulira kwa buli kimu why Raji. I don't know. Nange simba. He's God. Ye katonda. Praise be to God. Kamba favor zipwe. It look at what he tells Paul. Laba cha gamba Paul. In 2 Corinthians. Ba Corinthians cho kubili. Chapter 12. 12. And verse 4. Olinyirirwo kuna. Let's go there and see what Paul tells. Katugenye tulabe Paul cha tu gamba. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Ba Corinthians cho kubili 12. This is what Paul writes to us. Paul wa ati bwa tu gamba. From verse 2. He says I know a man in Christ. Manyo muntu mu Kristo. Now he's speaking about himself. Kati yeyo geda ko. But he's using the cryptic. He's saying I know a man. He simply doesn't want to say I saw a man. He say I know a man. Achideta muchamba. In Christ who 14 years ago. Omusaje ne yaka mali miaka 19. Whether in the body I do not know or Obamu, whether out of the body I do not know God knows. Oba mu mubiri simanyi oba awatali mubiri simanyi na e katonda yama nyi. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Ono ye yatwali bwa bwacho mugule eliyo kusatu. I say and I know such a man. Era manyo omuntu oyo. Whether in the body or out of the body. Oba mu mubiri oba awatali mubiri. I don't know. Simanyi God knows katonda amanyi how he was caught up into paradise we are twali ba mulusuku wa katonda and he had inexpressible words e yo now lile ebigambe ebitayogerekeka which it is not lawful for a man to utter ngatebisani na muntu kubyatula and he says of such the one i will boast na kubwo muntu oyo ali bwatyo nenyumirizanga yet of myself i will not boast ne kubwange sirie nyumirizanga except in my wabula mu bunafu bwange isi you don't know everything we and we will never know what actually paul saw era le tujja kumanya byo na paul byala or we never know what was revealed to him in this text te tujja kutegera okubikuliba ko yafunda mu chawa ndi we will take what was revealed tujja kutwale cho che yatuwa but what was not revealed that remains in this chata tu wachija kusigalanga chama and any attempt to try and explain what has been he deno sir katolia geza ko kunyonyele echi chame cha kwekebwa that is the highest expression of pride ya go game malala gechi ke cha wa now let's go to the message to demo bubaka the angel malaikon the bible says bible yetu gamba he has a little book yalina kataba kato which i believe is the miniature of the scroll that we saw zikirizanti ke katabo kanu ako muzingo guli gwe twalaba we saw the scroll in the hand twalaba muzingo guli mukono of god ogwa katonda which was sealed nga kuli ka kabonero and we saw previously that 
Jesus himself breaks the seven seas of the scroll. Now we see a miniature of this little book. This book. In the hand of the angel. And as this book is in one hand, the angel raises up one hand to heaven and he is actually swearing by the heaven that is the other reason why we believe this is not Jesus Christ because God does not swear by another God swears by himself praise be to God so when he swears by the heaven he declares in his in the vow that he makes that the time is a the cry that came from chapter 6 is now about to be responded to there is no other period of waiting no more waiting and here the Bible tells us that he had a voice from heaven telling him to go and take the scroll or the book that was open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the land. So John then moved. What are we seeing here? John now ceases to be somebody who is just watching what is happening and recording for us. He moves from being an observer. He now becomes a participant in what is happening. So now he moves down and picks this book. And the angel tells him to eat it. But before he eats it, the angel has this message for him. He tells him that when you eat this book, it is going to be number one bitter in your stomach. But it will be as sweet as honey. In your mouth. Now, why could something be sweet and then bitter at the same time? First of all, I want us to point out something here. If you have gone through the pages of the Bible, John is not the first one to eat a scroll or to eat a book. The same happened to Ezekiel in chapter 2. The same happened to Jeremiah in chapter 15. Now we're seeing John being asked to eat this book. Now, when we're talking about eating the book, some of us may like, what is God saying? Now we are eating papers. Let's, let's, let's take the idea from a term we often use. You see, when you are reading a very interesting book, you don't want to put it down. You are saying in your mind, if you are using English, you are saying, let me devour this book. So, if you have finished it, Taking it, eating it. Sometimes there are those interesting pages you want to go back on. And you often say, let me take some time to digest this. So you are actually using literature that is related to it. Yet, in actual fact, you are not getting papers and telling them and eating them. Praise be to God. You see, 
eating the book. And I want you to notice something. He ate the entire book. He did not eat parts of the book. You are to take it all in. The application to that, if we are to take this word of God, we are not cherry picking. If this is to work for you, you should take it all in. You should assimilate it in the tissues of your life. That is the prerequisite for us being effective witnesses. That is why Paul says to us in his uh, in his advice to Timothy, he says, study to show thyself approved of God. A workman who is not afraid, correctly dividing the word of truth. My brother, my sister, for us to be effective, we need to take this entire Bible, this entire word of God, and assimilate it. As, because when we eat it, when we digest it, we become a part of what it says. Then we are being effective witness. Otherwise, if we don't do that, then we just be gossip about God. And not talking about the God we have a personal relationship with. Praise be to God. Uh, uh, it's like you being in the house with your father, your mother, or your husband and wife. Or your children. You know best about them. The neighbors may talk about them. But because they're not in the family, they can't authoritatively know the mysteries of what happens in this house. They can't go to the depths to describe what happens in your house. Because they are not relating with you as a person. It is the same way with God. It is the same way with his word. Jesus says in John chapter 6 and verse 16. He says the words I speak. They are spirit and their life. Spirit and life. In other words, taking them in. You're joining your spirit to God's spirit. And the Bible tells us that he that is joined to the Lord in spirit, he that is joined to the Lord, Sorry. is one spirit with him. So the life of God then flows out of it. The life of the spirit then comes out of you. Life begins to flow out of you. That is the sweetness of this gospel. That is the sweetness of what we have. You see, the word of God has wonderful promises. Promises about the mercy of God. Promises about the grace of God. Promises about his forgiveness. Promises about his love. Promises about his blessing. Promises about his protection. Promises about his provision. Promises about his healing. And once you get all that in, you know it to be quiet and it to be taken. Beloved, it is sweet. 
As you dwell further in this relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, this gets you involved personally. But as you go on, you will realize that there are certain attitudes that you cherish. Things that you admire, things that you like. That God will call you to lay aside. Habits that you have grown up with. That God is telling you these ones you can't proceed with them. And it seems like. Beloved, it's not easy. For anyone of you who has taken this journey, it's not easy to let go. Literally, it's like what Jesus is talking about in Mark chapter 9. Verse 47. It's like you are plucking out your eye. It's like you are cutting off a limb. See, what God is telling you to obey. Then sudden looks like something bitter. It may be bitter, but it is very beneficial. To so that is the aspect I bring to you today. But I want you to see the other aspect of the bitterness. This, you see, the good news of the gospel. Is sweet to those that receive it. But then it becomes bitter to those that reject it. To those that mock God. To those that say no to the God's act of grace. For the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting. God did not come to condemn the world. He sent his son that the world may be saved through. That is his act of grace. He does not rejoice in seeing the wicked perish. So I pray today that these words of truth that we have read may awaken you. Because once you reject this, then the judgment will come. It will come with certainty. And there is nothing else that can be done. Because you have rejected God's truth. You have rejected God's grace. How I pray today that this truth brings you to the brings your heart to a place of conviction. That if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that if you know nothing about Jesus Christ, that you don't have any desire to know Him, you don't have any desire to love Him, to trust Him, you get to that place. Where you invite him in your life. You make him the savior of your life. You grow to a place where you know him and love him. And trust him. And follow him. And serve him. Otherwise, we will get to the place of Matthew chapter 7. From verse 21 to 23. Jesus, Jesus says, Many will come to me on that day. And, and say, Lord, Lord, we did this, we did this. And say, Go out from you. Let's get to that place of repentant faith. Let's get to that place. Today, where we you. hear the words of God. Repent. And leave. This is my cry to you. 
Therefore, if you are there, you have never received Jesus in your life as your personal Savior. I want you to join with me as we make this prayer. And if you are there, you have been gloriously saved by Jesus. This is your call to you to take this gospel to the many that have not received it. And God will richly bless you. Many will be saved. Hell will be empty. And heaven will be full. So, for those that are committing their lives to Christ, I want you to join me in prayer. As you commit your heart to the blessed Savior, as you commit your life to Him wholeheartedly. He will change you. Let's pray. Say after me. Father in heaven. I come before you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Who needs your saving grace. Jesus. Died. On the cross. For my sins. He was buried. And rose again on the Therefore I pray Lord that may my sins may my life be crucified with Christ buried with him and risen with him Lord I pray forgive my sins make me a child in your house make me your own from this day forward I declare that I am saved Lord that my name is written in the book that from this day forward I will live my life for you following the leading of your spirit till you come or till I come to meet you Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now, if you have given your life to Christ, you are now a new creation. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. First things first. I want you to find someone. Tell them that you have been wonderfully and gracious. Mark this day because this is the beginning of beginnings. Your life will never remain the same. Now, briefly before our time is, is done, I want to pray for those that are afflicted. Believing God for your healing. I want to pray for those that have no hope. And let's believe God for restoration. I want to pray for those who have given up on life. The Bible tells us that a living dog is better than a dead. You are still alive. God says, I am the God of the living. Today, your miracle, God will intervene in the affairs of your life. And you will testify of his grace. Let's pray. Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. And let's believe God for a miracle. Let's, let's believe God for His intervention in the life of men. Loving Father in Jesus' name. Wonderful and gracious are your ways and works. You say in your word, Behold, I do a new thing. 
Oyogera mu kigambo kyonti dabankole ekintu ekipya. Will you not know all of it? Mwe nate mujja kimanya. Lord, mukama, your hand is stretched forward. Omukono gwo gugoloddwa. Bring healing. Guleto okuonyeza. Your hand is stretched forward. Omukono gwo gugoloddwa. Bring deliverance. Okuleto okusimula. Your hand is stretched forward. Omukono gwo gugoloddwa. To bring redemption. Okuleto okusimula. Your hand is stretched forward. Omukono gwo gugoloddwa. To bring restoration. Okuleto okusimula. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God. Mulinye lya Yesu lya amanyo mwana wa katondo mula. I speak restoration to your people. I speak healing to those that are afflicted. I speak deliverance to those that are tormented. I speak joy to those who are sad in this moment. To those that are grieving at this time. I speak your comfort. Lord, it's not by my, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Because when your hand is stretched forward, no one can draw it back. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony of healing. Thank you, Lord, for the new opportunity. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the new doors that are opening for your people. Thank you, Lord, because you are lifting somebody out of the dark and causing them to sit with princes. Thank you, Lord, because somebody these valleys are being filled. Thank you, Lord, because somebody's mountains are being lifted. We speak grace to those mountains. And we thank you, Lord, because it is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, King of Glory. Hallelujah, Lord of Glory. Hallelujah. Be glorified, King of Glory. Be glorified, Lord of Majesty. To you we ascribe all glory. To you we ascribe all honor. To you we ascribe all majesty. Both now and forevermore. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube. YouTube. A Dominion Church. Dominion Church. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Facebook. Don't forget. There is a number on your screen. You can call us and we will be of help to agree with you for what God desires to do in your life. Thank you for being with us. Today. Uh, my name is again John Bazira from Dominion Church. And as we sign off, we say have a wonderful week. And God reach in peace.